everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder how many of you wake up in the morning with a tired, depressed feeling, even after sleeping all night. And how many are cross and irritable all day? If you took the trouble to look into this, to discover the reason for it, you know what you'd probably find? That your condition is due to lack of really sound, restful sleep. For it's only deep, refreshing sleep that allows proper rebuilding of tissues and keeps you fit for the day's work. Now, many people are able to get the sleep they need by drinking Horlicks malted milk hot before going to bed. It rests you and refreshes you, helps build you back to normal while you sleep. So if you've not been feeling so good today, remember this before you go to bed tonight. Drink a glass full of Horlicks hot. You can get it, you know, from the druggist if you haven't any on hand in either natural or chocolate flavor. Did you know that all requests for Lum and Abner's photograph must be in the mail by Sunday midnight? If you haven't sent for yours yet, you've no time to lose. Send your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlicks malted milk to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Squire Kemp got back yesterday afternoon from Chicago, where he spent the past week uh, disposing of the hogs that Lum and Abner received from their hog chain letter. The Squire has made a complete settlement with Lum and Abner. And as we look in on the old fellows today, we find them down at their jot down store discussing the outcome of their latest venture. Listen. Well, I still believe the Squire be out of some money that it's coming from. Abner, you're the complainest fellow I've ever seen in my life. Why, Skimp walked in here yesterday and handed us $2,300, and all you've did ever since is sit around and mouth about it. Well, I just don't want to be beat out of nothing. No, but just stop and think. We sent out one hog on that chain letter, and here we get $2,300 worth of hogs back off of it. Body can't complain none about that. Yeah, but we had a lot of hogs, too. Yeah, but Squire had a lot of expense in handling them, too. Railroad fare and feed. Rent on them stockyards where he kept them at before he sold them, and... Veterans' expense was them before we sold them. All them things runs into money. And then uh, 10% we give Squire for selling them for us, too, you know. Yeah, he had a long list of expenses, all right. But trouble is, we don't know where he put out the right figures or not. Well, there ain't no way to tell him about that. But we've done had our settlement with Squire now, so the best thing to do is just forget about it. Be thankful for what we got. Yeah, well... That is a right like, smart of money, ain't it? <laughs> Why, of course it is. $2,300. Yes, sir. <laughs> Danny, me and you have been making some money here lately, you know. Oh, yeah. We had a balance of over $1,400 in there at the bank before I deposited that check this morning. Yeah, well, that's what we made out of the circus, wasn't it? Yeah. That yeah, runs us up now to over $3,700 we've got. Well, I do know. <laughs> and three months ago, we never had nothing. <laughs> no, we've gone hungry. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> No, sir, ever since we started with the circus, my, now everything we've got into has been a moneymaker. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're sort of like King Midas. Every, everything we take turns to gold. Yeah, that was sort of... Uh, uh, who? I say we're sort of like King Midas. You know, everything he takes turns right into gold. Well, I do know. I never hear that. Oh, yeah. He, he could just take something and it'd turn right into gold, huh? Yeah, that's all he had to do. Just yeah. take it. <laughs> there it was, 18 carats, solid gold. I dog is now there's something that I'd love to be able to do. <laughs> just give me one day of that, and I wouldn't have to work no more as long as I live, Mom. I'd just go around touching everything I seen. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd have its drawbacks, I mean, just like everything else. Drawbacks? Yeah, it sounds good offhand, but never worked out so well for him. Well, I don't see how it could help but work out all right. Let me just... He's dogged lazy to get up and touch stuff. Well, you see, the trouble of it was, uh, everything he takes turned to go. Got to be a new one. Well, I never complain about it, I'll tell you that. I reckon how he done it. Well, I don't know. It was just sort of a gift with him. It's some natural thing. He'd been complaining, just like you are now, about not making money fast enough. And, and complaining about, uh, that's all he thought about, was making money, you know. Uh-huh. All of a sudden, everything he takes just started turning to gold. And, uh, all he done to get that way was just sort of something, huh? Well, it's been so long since I read about him, I don't wish to just how it went, but he was crazy over money, and that's all he thought about, so <laughs> just to learn him better, he was punished that away. Well, I do know. <laughs> and, uh, all of a sudden he started catching things, and they started turning to gold. 
What's the matter? What are you doing that for? Oh, uh, nothing. I don't reckon it's working on me. I'll have to complain some more, I reckon. Well, here, you don't want to get that way at me. Who don't? You don't. Well, that's just all you know about it. I wish to goodness you could get that way just for one day. Just I do, too. There. That'd be all I'd want, just one day. <laughs> Don't be if I wouldn't fix myself up. I'd catch this store and catch that house of mine over there. <laughs> now, that would be something, wouldn't it? Living in a house made out of solid 18 karat gold guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd go over there and catch that biggest mountain across on there, huh? Oh, Old you. ball knob. Just turn the whole business into gold. I'd doggy that last me for a while. <laughs> Yeah, but there'd be a lot of things you'd catch accidental, though. Well, law me, I wouldn't care as long as they all turned to gold. Oh, yeah, something else, too. I'd catch every tooth in my head. I've always wanted gold teeth. Yeah, but how would you eat? Uh, Everything you'd pick up would turn to gold. <laughs> About chomp down on a gold biscuit some morning and break a bunch of teeth out of your head. How'd you like that? Well, I wouldn't eat it. I'd just put it in my pocket and go stand it. Just fill my pockets up with it. Yeah, you break up them teeth before you notice it, though. Oh, I don't know, Mom. They couldn't be much harder than the biscuits that Elizabeth made when we first got married. And I never broke my teeth on them. Yeah, but you'd have to eat something at them. Well, I'd eat light bread then. Well, it'd turn to gold, too, though. Yeah, let's see. Now, what could I eat? You couldn't eat nothing. Everything you'd take would turn to gold. I know what I'd do. I'll just let Elizabeth feed me. That way I won't have to take it. Yeah, and you just about accidentally take her, and then she'll turn to gold, too. Uh, does it work on humans, too? Why, well, sure. If you catch Elizabeth, you'd turn her right into a gold statue. Oh, my goodness. Well, I know. I don't want to do that. <laughs> you'd be wearing gold clothes, even. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I couldn't even sit down, could I? Well, you couldn't even walk. Maybe just like I have it on a solid iron suit. Yeah. I might put some hinges on my britches there where I could bend my knees and walk around a little. Yeah, but you'd just be just like King Midas. You'd be wishing to goodness you could be changed back like you was before. I could take this watch of mine. Have a solid gold watch. It never cost me but a dollar. <laughs> I don't be wrong. I could just buy up a whole bunch of dollar watches and turn them into gold. That'd be a good business to go into. <laughs> you'd have your regrets over the about you. Yeah, there's Cedric back already. That's from far away you been. Well, I had him out passing out them handbills inviting everybody to the ceremony tomorrow. The unveiling of my statuary. Oh, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That is tomorrow, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, but he was going to have a big turnout, Abner. It is. Yeah, I talked to Squire Skimp, and he said he'd get up after I made the presenting speech and accept it for the citizens of Pine Ridge. Uh-huh. Did you get them all passed out, Cedric? Uh, yes, Mom, I've got a few left here. I'll pass, uh, I'll pass them out on my way home, I reckon. Uh, let me see one of them, Cedric. I ain't had a chance to read it yet. Yes, Mom. Uh, careful, don't touch me not there. <laughs> no, I don't reckon I've got that way yet. Have you heard much talk around about uh, doing some R, Cedric? No, Mom, I never paid no attention. I just handed it to him and then went on. Hey, hey, hey. Huh? I never said nothing. I'd be free. You got free down here three times across the top. Yeah, I figured that'd catch your eyes. Anything is free, you know, around here. Here's though. barbecue and unveiling ceremony. The statuary of Lon Edwards, king of the hogs, will be presented to the citizens of Pine Ridge at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Come one, come all. I'll cut this little reading and I'll hit the bottom for now. Oh, that's that. Uh, I put that down there. You see, you can't tell how many folks will be there, and I just figured we might not have enough barbecue to go around. There will be plenty of barbecue for all, but don't make a hog out of yourself. Yeah, that ought to get Well, much obliged, Cedric. Come down tomorrow, and I'll let you sit right down in front so you can hear the goings on good. Here. There's a quarter for you. <laughs> well, much obliged, Mr. Lump. What time is the eating part of the doings tomorrow? Oh, right after the speech-making's over. Uh, if I do, um, I wouldn't see them till you get done talking for their so I get up and leave on you if you do. Uh, I might get you to help Clave tomorrow, too, Cedric. He's going to be awful busy passing out sandwiches and all. Oh, yes, he will, yeah. Yes, Mom, I'd love to help him, too. <laughs> get all you want to eat yourself that way, Cedric. Yes, Mom. <laughs> uh, you better be over there a little before three, then, Cedric. All right, Mr. Rome. Much obliged to you. That's all right, Cedric. I just thank you, Mom. If I can get that gold business to working on myself, well, I might be able to save you some money. Save me some money? Yeah, if I could turn stuff into gold, well, 
You wouldn't have to buy that statue of him. I could just catch you and turn you into a solid gold monument. Well, there ain't no danger you learn how to do that. May as well get that idea out of your head right now. I explained to you what a terrible fix you'd be in if you was to get that way. Turn stuff into gold that you never wanted to. Yeah, but I've got a way to figure it out now, Lambert. Well, that wouldn't bother me now. No. I'm wouldn't not... bother you now. Oh, no, that's easy. <laughs> I just wear a pair of gloves. Oh, forget myself. Well, you ain't going to learn how to change stuff to gold, have you? may as well get that idea right out of your head. Well, you said a while ago that we was getting sort of like that king, or uh, whatever his name was, and everything we touched turned to gold. Well, I meant we was uh, making some good invest now. You're just lucky to have a man like me as a partner to sort of look after them things for you, know it? I'm just sitting around now, I've got my ear to the ground, looking for some place to invest that $3,700. Got your ear to the ground. Well, not exactly to the ground, but... Huh? I'm going to take that $3,700 and put in some kind of business that'll make us financial dependent for the rest of our lives. We'll have statuaries or me and you on every corner in Pine Ridge before I get done. <laughs> Well, now that the old fellows have a little capital to work with, Lum has some big ideas about the future. Folks, if you haven't already sent in for one of Lum and Abner's photographs, you've no time to lose. There are only a very few of these 8 by 10 autographed pictures left, and the offer closes Sunday at midnight. All requests must be in the mail by then. So don't delay. Act tonight. Here's all you have to do, you know, to get one of these photographs of the quaint old fellow. Just write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlicks malted milk. Then send the wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. They'll send you a picture right away. But remember, your request must be in the mail before midnight Sunday. Lum and Abner want every one of their friends to send in for one of their photographs before then. It's a good way of expressing your friendship for the old fellows and your thanks to Horlicks malted milk for this program that entertains you each evening. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs>